So if you guys have been watching our videos for a while, you remember last spring we rebuilt an old canoe. We actually end up liking canoeing more than we thought we would. So now we've decided we need a canoe rack to fit on the ATV. And my brother had built this one years ago to fit his mid 90s ATV. He was kind enough to give it to us. So now we're gonna to try to modify it to fit on the Can-Am. So the first thing we gotta do is clean this old one up, get rid of this old rotten wood and this foam and rope, cut off the, uh, the old u bolt bolts in the bottom. So I've got this old chunk of railing. I'm gonna use the bandsaws to cut it to section with tubing right here. That should be enough to make our back bracket, I think. Hydraulic system, this saw is broken. So it's kind of awkward to hold with one hand. Without dropping one way or the other. So basically all we're doing is mounting that right there so the rear burr on that rack can just come in, rest right down on it and we'll have two bolts going up through or a bolt on either side with just a big turnbuckle knob on top to lock it on and I think that should work well on the in the rear and we'll set this to be the same height as the front rack that should keep it level sounds like a good plan anyways Hmm. Hmm. So just getting a measurement of this front rack. Okay, it's 36 and three quarters of another one. In theory, that mark is the top of the front rack. And so if, I, if that's bolted there like that, that piece can slide in there, no problem but it wouldn't be able to slide down on if there's a bolt sticking up through because it has to slide in this way. Hmm. Hmm. Would it have to be down? Why does it have to be level? Well, that's what I'm wondering if we can get away with a little bit off level. Or actually, that'd be said, I can shorten the front too. I think this will go an extra inch down, inch-ish. That would be enough to slide in and still slide down over a bolt. It's got me wondering actually, anyways, when we sit on the four-wheeler, what goes down more, the front or the rear? Oh, come on. <laughs> so if you've ever watched any of the uh, Animal Planet videos, their policy is if they're filming wildlife, the wildlife is struggling, the policy is not to help it. And I think Kylie got the same policy. <laughs> 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 I was wondering where that was going. <laughs> I almost think she takes joy in it. I was about to say, I'd love to help you, but... <laughs> so I think I'm going to do, I'm going to bring it over to the hydraulic press, and it's going to pinch this bottom a little bit to try to collapse it. Hopefully that'll let it twist a little bit to sit more level. It's not bad like it is, but I think we can do better. Oh, yeah. Perfect. So here goes nothing.
<laughs> it was so close to hitting that plastic. Got some carriage bolts to bolt this piece on and through. So I've actually reamed out these holes as square as I could to fit the carriage bolt head. I think carriage bolt just looks a little tidier on there than a hex bolt. Doesn't look intrusive like that. See on there all the time. Doesn't look bad at all. Quite a bit off level compared to the four wheeler. And we knew that was going to be an issue because we had to lower the rear a little lower than the front rack, just, just the way it had to be mounted on. But we've got a plan. Just see what the difference is here. And cut up through here with the grinder, almost cutting it off, just leaving the outside connection, both sides. And that's going to allow me to splay that open a little bit. We'll change this angle, but that's okay. And then I'm going to cut in here. And that'll allow me to bend this down steeper. And then that'll push that forward and in theory lower that down. I don't know if we get it quite low enough for us, but it'll get us in the ballpark. And if I still have to, I can trim this bottom off accordingly. So I'm just gonna pull this open. Then open up them grinder curves. So as much as I hate to admit it, I made a mistake that time. Cause I'm wanting to fold this back that way. So now I can only fold it the thickness of that curve. If I cut in through this side, then I could open it up like I did on the top as much as I wanted. So now I might have to do a series of curves. So yeah, now that we've got everything set, I just got to fill in these grinder curves with the welder and then do the bottom as well. is I'm gonna drill right down through this bar, right down through a flat spot here in the rack. And I'll just have a 3 8 bolt, just reach underneath, slip it up through with a knob here to crank it down. And when I take it off, I'll just have to pull the bolt out and throw it back in there temporarily. It's not thinking about it anymore, let's just do it. So it's such a nice day, we decided to bring it home and finish it here on the lawn. All the metal work is done, all the welding. So now it's just take it back off and clean it all up, sand it down with the grinder and then give it a shot of paint. And it's the 4th of March today. Yeah, the 4th of March today, it's like 15 degrees Celsius. Beautiful day. Last year on this date, we had a foot of wet, heavy snow. So we're, we're loving it today. Let's put, it, oh. <laughs> Let's put it upside down right here for a second. <laughs> I'll remove those holes first thing here. You I don't know. 
Listen to those birds, you can tell spring is in the air. So we've jumped ahead a few days. Another beautiful day though, Friday afternoon. We're heading to the cabin, so it's time to do the final assembly on this rack. So we can bring it up and have it there. So this is the part that's going to stay on the four-wheeler permanently. Like that. I think it looks alright on there. Doesn't stand out too much. Just like that. Like this. Like this, I said. <laughs> so let's do that first. It's the 8th of March right now. Here at the house, winter's gone. The ice is even all gone into the lake, which is rare. Last year, this time, we had about a foot of snow and you could still walk out across the lake, no problem. So I know what you're thinking. Why aren't you using a ratchet? It won't fit on there. I swear. Okay, so that's step one. So like I was saying, that part will stay on there permanently. I think it looks alright on there. A little extra bumper. So in the front, just drilled these two matching holes and a bolt just pushes up through there. I know the holes in the rack is a bit of a no-no, but it's my four-wheeler. When I'm done with it, it's probably going to be straight to a scrap yard, so... Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. So these knobs are my greatest life's accomplishment. Cut them out of three quarter inch plexiglass, bulletproof plexiglass, so they shouldn't last. Cut them on my new CNC router, even inserted the nut. So proud of these. I had these bolts welded on, they realized they weren't long enough, so I cut them off. So I'm going to want to spin, unless I got lock washers underneath them. But I haven't got none right now, so I'm just going to put a wrench on it. Those of you watching the video, pretend you don't see the wrench right now. So for now, I'm actually going to throw this old mix-matched 916 wrench I found in the box. Problem solved. But yeah, we will address that. We'll weld them on solid on the bottom or lock washers, one or the other. Not sure yet. And another thing we forgot, never really forgot, just never had time to get to, is there needs to be a rubber bushing between the rack and the, uh, the mounting bracket. The same thing on the front rack, between the racks.
So you might have noticed we still have a broken taillight. And you'll see why in an upcoming video. Hope nobody notices. So we just pulled in. There's actually a lot less snow here than I was imagining. Just some here in the trees. A couple inches. Hard frozen snow. But anywhere where the sun's been hitting is basically nothing. Across the road. Still a fair bed up on the trees. But not too bad. I think we're going to survive the winter. First thing I want to do is get this four-wheeler off and get the canoe up on there and give it a try. Tomorrow they're calling for a pile of rain. So I think tonight is our only chance to actually try this out. Obviously we won't be taking it to any water. Everything's still frozen. But at least we'll see how it looks. So I just brought up these self-retracting ratchet straps here, but I don't really like them. It's a big knob of the ratchet here. It can swing around and be chattering on the canoe if you're going any distance. And we still haven't got any foam protectors or rubber protectors to go on here yet. That's something else we'll need before we uh, actually do any real use of the thing. I love the way it sits on there. Looks good. I'll be back. So just took it for a little test spin down the road here. Works good, solid as a rock. Canoe doesn't move at all. That's with no rubber protection underneath the canoe and the, uh, the top rails. Get that on there, it's gonna be nice. This thing's sure going to come in handy this spring. Can't wait. Another couple of weeks to wait. The lakes will start to be opening up up here. I did hear the ratchet. Yeah, no, it is up there a little bit. away there. Yep, we switch them out. So get some uh, rubber on top of those. Yep, I was going eighty kilometers an hour there, like with all, no problem. We always keep the ATV in that shed all the time, unless you're planning on stealing it. Then we don't keep it in there at all. <laughs> but you can guarantee before the summer's out, I'm gonna drive in and forget this is on, and I'm gonna go over the handlebars onto the shed floor.
My puzzle waiting for me. <laughs> yeah. It's been weeks, feels like. A little chilly in here right now, though. It's warmer in the shed than it is in here. So this is it, just like we left it. Now that spring has arrived, a whole new set of adventures can begin. Thanks for watching guys. Take care.